Hello everyone. In this video, we are talking all about what the telephoto lens is made for. And it is definitely made for locations like this. Right now, I'm in the Faroe Islands and there's this super epic location where you can have a little person standing on the ridge here in the background. And then you have this insane backdrop of the northern coastline of the Faroe Islands. So photographing on locations like this, where you have some kind of foreground and then you have a background. It is super important that you, of course, get the composition right. I'll talk about that later, but also the settings. So right now I'm in aperture priority. I'm on ISO 100 and that gives me a shutter speed of about one two hundredth of a second because I'm actually all the way close down to f16. The reason why you want to shoot at f16 is that even though the background and the foreground is actually very far from the camera where I'm standing here, and then you walk all the way up here to the lighthouse and then you stand here. So even though the foreground is far away, you will still need to close down the aperture to something like f16 actually more in this case here because I'm shooting all the way out at 300 millimeter. If you're shooting at like 200 millimeter, it's sufficient with f16. But when you zoom more in, the depth of field becomes narrower. So even though it's far away, you need to close down that aperture. In my case here, just to be sure, I want to take a photo where the foreground is sharp with the person standing on the ridge. And I want a photo of the background that is sharp. And then I'm combining those two in Photoshop, simply just to make sure that I get everything sharp because I don't want to shoot at f32 because everything becomes a little bit too blurry because of all the diffraction that comes in at those closed down apertures. I am a bit divided on this photo. As much as I like it, the background is just super epic. I'm not too happy about the foreground. The texture of the patches of snow makes the foreground very busy and pulls attention away from the background. Having a cleaner foreground with either only snow or no snow at all would have benefited the photo. Luckily I returned with the other group the following week and even though the snow was actually a bit worse for many of the other scenes in this location, this specific composition delivered a fantastic photo as we got some of the best light I've ever had for this composition. I right now run a spring sale where I can get entire $100 off my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. Here I cover all the techniques and tools I use to edit my photos in a 30 plus videos course that can bring you from a beginner to an advanced post-processor. The discount code is in the description of the video. Be sure to benefit from it while it lasts. So if you know anything about Kelso, you know that there are different angles from where you can shoot. So we were just here in the background just before. Now we come over to another place where there's like 360 degree all around. Just looks amazing. I'm sitting here trying to cover myself from like fairly strong wind here. So you can actually still hear what it is I'm saying. But a place like this just works so well with the telephoto lens. So here in the background, there are plenty of photos when people are walking on that ridge with the background islands. It looks super, super epic. 
but also like in that direction there there are some islands and when they come in and out of all these snow showers or the snow showers cover them and they move away slowly we get some absolutely amazing effects on these islands it's like ghost ships coming out of the fog or something like that there's also sunbeams coming down and seagulls flying around and it works really well with a simplified composition where there's not really a whole lot of emphasis on the foreground because there's basically just the sea but the mountains in and of themselves still look really really cool when the scene is relatively flat I generally just shoot at whatever lens's optimal aperture because it's so far away that I can theoretically shoot at like f1.8 on a 200 millimeter lens because I really only need that one slither of background to be in focus. But I'm simply just using whatever lens, if I'm using my Tamron 28 to 200 and go into the telephoto range, or if I'm using my 100 to 400, then I'm simply just using the aperture where it's most optimal. And for the most part, it is between like f11 and f16. But it's also very important you need to take into consideration when you're shooting with the telephoto lens in a flat environment is that there's a risk of big vignetting. And dependent on your focal length and your aperture combination, that vignetting can actually be quite big or quite substantial in the photo. So you need to find the right combination to shoot at. I really like how these two photos turned out. Sadly, the foreground suffers a bit from the same snow patch phenomenon as my first photo from this video, but the very atmospheric background and small people on the ridge that stands out on the background and to show scale and adventure just looks so good. I also decided to crop it into a 4x3 format to get rid of some of the dead space on the right. On top of that, by cropping I'm also creating a leading line from the upper right corner all the way down to the cobble walking on the ridge and helping out with the balance. And right there I described six different utterly important compositional tools I use in my landscape photography. If you want to learn and incorporate this way of thinking into your photography, be sure to get my ebooks on exactly that topic, Composition in Landscape Photography. They're easy to read and have tons of examples to exemplify the point. There are links to both of them in the description of the video. Throughout the day on the second workshop the light changed a lot. I will just sneak this photo in here because I really like it, although actually it was taken with a wide angle lens. And just before we had to leave to catch the ferry we got some beautiful sunbeams overlaying the two sea stacks. So we have made it to the small town of Chernovik in the northernmost part of the Faroe Islands. And as you can see I have the sun straight in my face, however in the background we have the two famous sea stack Riesing and Kellingen. And right now we are photographing towards them, a rainbow appeared, which because the sun is that way and we are shooting that way, how it works. <laughs> and then we are also trying to catch the breaking waves against the rock here behind it while having the sea stacks in there and hopefully some seagulls flying in and out of the scene. Absolutely stunning. This really is one of the places where you want to bring a long lens, a telephoto lens. I'm shooting right now at like 200-ish millimeter, zooming in a bit out, getting the entire scene, zooming a bit in, getting a more concentrated scene. You can see there are some waves breaking here in the background. I try to avoid having the foreground waves in the photo, avoiding them because they're taking up a lot of attention because they're breaking and they're white in the bottom of the frame so I'm making sure not to include those but yeah besides that it's just one of those really really cool scenes that 
always deliver something. So when it comes to the settings, it's actually very simple. I've switched to manual mode, simply just to lock down my exposure. And then I'm actually shooting at 1 800th of a second to really catch the moment when the waves break against the rocks and also the seagulls because they're flying quite fast. But that means I have to actually up my ISO to 320 because I still want to have the entire scene in focus. So I'm shooting with a relatively close down aperture of like f13, 14, 16, something like that. The hardest thing right now is because it's rainbow weather, we actually have quite a lot of rain coming in or snow coming in, hitting the front element of our lenses. So obviously that is something I need to take care of too each time I start shooting, simply just to wipe off with whatever cloth like this and then you can get a few shots before it gets dirty again. Now I have no problem admitting to the fact that I have a new addiction and that it is to get my favorite photos printed. So this video is very kindly sponsored by Sol Digital and I want to show you my brand new favorite photos 2021 photo book. Isn't it pretty? Acrylic front glass with one of the photos. So this is probably a better perspective where you can actually see it. I just want to talk a little bit about how I designed it. So you can see here on the first page, just have a little bit of text. You can add as much text as you want in the editor. Very, very easy to put this together. It actually only took me like half an hour. So the first photo is simply just one that kind of stands out that I couldn't really find proper space to within the book. And as you know, with my favorite photos, I really like to do them chronologically throughout the year. This photo is a private book. It's for me so that I can see what I photographed this year and my favorite photos. This is the same morning. Obviously, it makes sense to put them together. Here again, same day, obviously makes sense to put them together. It's more architecture than actually landscape. Here we have the same tree, however, from two different days. I really enjoy these. On these pages, you can see how it's from the same forest, also obviously the same morning, but I've put the photos deliberately so that the trees are bended in towards each other. This page is quite interesting because obviously it's two different locations. However, because this photo is predominantly magenta, purple, sunset colors, whereas this is green over here, they make for a very beautiful color contrast. So these two colors are opposite each other on the color wheel. These two noctilucent clouds. This photo here, I actually took that in 2020. However, I didn't release it before 2021 with my noctilucent clouds video. On these pages, also a couple of photos that I took close to each other, two different locations, but very similar in their expression and subject. Actually, more or less totally the same, but two different locations. Now these two photos here, this one is from the beginning of August. You can see from before all the heather actually started popping. And this one here is from later in the year. As far as I remember, it's like end September, start October. But they are quite similar in their expression, so I decided to put them together. Obviously these two here, also from the same morning, if you recall my F16 video, makes sense to put them together. Now this photo here is actually from this morning and this photo here is the same morning as these two photos here. However, I decided to put this photo in here because I needed it to fit with the colors and these two photos here are also from the same morning. It's actually from the same morning as this photo here, but this one here is more green, so I put it together with this, whereas these have these golden tones. 
these two photos here also match really, really well in expression, color, and location. Actually, I've taken these photos at the exact same location, just turned around 180 degrees. It's the same trail right here. And these two photos are from the same morning as this one. However, it did not make sense to put this one and change one of these here. These two photos, again from the same morning, the same forest, put them together, makes sense, kind of same theme. And this photo here on the left has been taken on the same day as these two photos. And this one here is actually not from Denmark, this is from Germany. However, I think the tones kind of fitted together, but I was running out of space. So even though it's not the same forest, not the same place, the tones go together, so I think it's fine. Two photos from the Faroe Islands. Actually, the right hand shot here is the same mountain as the one you can see here in the background. So they are taken on the same day and made sense to put together. A couple of awesome photos that also made sense to put together, however, taken at completely different locations. Two more awesome photos taken on the exact same morning. These trees here are actually the same as these trees. And this photo here is from the same morning as these two. But I put it in here and I kind of like how blue and red or blue and orange also go well together on these two photos, although they are like opposite colors on the color wheel. These two photos were also taken on the same day in the Faroe Islands. These mountains here are the same as here in the background. This photo has been taken from up here at the lighthouse, probably within like five minutes or so. These clouds over here are the same as the clouds over here. And on the last page, same theme with the Faroe Islands. This photo here was taken on the same day as these two, and this one was taken on its own. So if you want to create your own photography book, I can highly recommend it. It is very addictive. There are links down in the description to Sal Digital's homepage for the US, the UK, and EU. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the links in the description.